There we go. Okay. It's working. Yes. All right. We are live. So, uh, module three is what we finished up at this point in time. Um, I think that, oops. I don't know if you guys are able to even use these appropriately so you can actually upload those. Let me make sure. Oh, yep. I need to fix that. Yeah, Excel file. Oh, no, last time I did that, I think some of you said you had issues uploading it. So I'm going to take that restriction off. There we go. And control four, we'll do the next one too. Oh, you guys can submit those extra credit ones if you want to. Okay, cool. Uh, now that that's taken care of, um, again, make sure that you fill out that form of evaluation. Um, that's how I know uh, changes to make, you know, what's going well, what's not going well. Uh, I think I mentioned before, too, that it's usually the part where when we have things to do on Fridays, people start saying, I wish things would do on Sunday instead. And then people switch the other way back again. So um, that's the general one I see every semester. Uh, maybe I should start just having things to do on Saturday. Like it's right in the middle between the two. So maybe that, maybe that will suffice. Maybe I'll do that next semester uh, or this semester if people suggest that. Um, but the only other thing for this module uh, is for next week. Uh, we are having someone come um, that is going to be joining us next week. Um, they are just here to review me and to give me advice on other ways to keep you all engaged and to uh, work with you all. And so uh, I would have loved to save 3G for that. It looks like some things have changed though. So, because uh, you all are good to go. Um, so we'll just, we'll go what we, what we what we have. So in my mind, at least, if that's okay with you all. Um, so I, my suggestion is that we, Maybe get a head started looking at 3G, asking any questions involved with that. Uh, if anyone has anything for 3A, 3B, message me privately too if you want. Um, okay, so into 3G. Um, so let's think about different concepts that we've gone over in this course so far. So, so far, uh, we have, you looked at Format Painter, a lot of Format Painter being used, honestly. Uh, we've looked at charts and how to manipulate a chart, um, how to uh, format pie charts and update, update, and modify different charts, add different uh, elements to it. We looked at what if analysis, we use goal seek so that we could uh, change um, a value by, or see how a value can reach a certain goal based off of changing one specific cell. Um, we've also used uh, we've also uh, used formulas in order to project what could happen um, like at a, at a certain point in time uh, based off information and we've seen how to copy and paste those values uh, without having to copy the formulas so that we could we re reuse the formulas uh, for a different projection uh, and we've seen how to insert a chart uh, a, a line chart um, and we've seen how to modify that as well. We, we've even seen how to insert a background image if we wanted to for a chart. So we've also looked at moving a chart to its own sheet. So you'll be doing all of those things within Project 3G, things we call operations. So, um, of course, I do have Excel back, as you all saw. But I think it would be great in this instance, once again, if anyone would like to volunteer um, their screen. They can, and we can walk through it. Walk through it with them. Um, this way, you could get a head start. Some of you probably may say, "I've already started, and I'm almost, I'm almost done." So, which is fine too. But if you would like to get a head start on 3G, you can. Otherwise, if, if anyone wants to volunteer, otherwise, I'll do it. Uh, but I think it'd be nice to give you some of you a chance to get a head start too. So, up to you all. If anyone wants to volunteer, I'll give you all some time to volunteer for that. Anyone wants it?
<laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, give it to you then, Sandra. You're gonna tell me, is it Sandra or is it Sandra? Because I've said like both. San Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sandra. Hey, you are now the presenter. Everyone else, I hope you have your textbook with you in 3G so that you can maybe jot notes down on the questions that you may have about what it's asking you to do. Um, and so whenever you are ready, Sandra, you may share your screen. I would say go ahead and open up that uh, E03G expenses file. Oh, okay, great, you already got everything ready to go. Okay, and she's already begun to save it, perfect. All right, so we are set. So um, step one was opening in and saving it. I'm sure that you all are comfortable with that at this point in time. Um, we're about nine assignments, and actually, as you really could say more than that, uh, we're about 13 assignments in, uh, if you include the extra credits. So, um, yeah, so, um, and part two, it says in the expenses worksheet, remember our, our sheets are named, um, and you can see the sheet, you can see the name of the sheet on the sheet tab at the bottom of the page. Um, so as for us to calculate the row totals for each expense item, in the range F, uh, F5 to F9. And so if you go to F5, I think she already, she may have already done this. If you go to F5, as you all can see, she already took those sums and she has those row totals. Uh, she just uses use a sum for, uh, formula. Um, you could also select them and then use auto sum. It should be able to recognize, hey, I have numbers to the left of me, so I'm going to add them together. Um, all right, good. It asks for us to calculate the column totals for each quarter. So you actually could select all of those if you want. Oh, uh, this is homework. Yes, this is homework. Sorry. I didn't catch that. So this is your 3G work, which is due, for, this is due next week. So it's not actually that one. What was that? No, you, uh, you you were doing correct. I was saying that you could actually select all all the quarters. Uh, okay. So you can do it at one time. Um, yeah. Uh, just a quarter. Uh, well, you can do that one too. Actually, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you can do that one too. You can do annual total as well. If you hold shift and hit hit the right arrow, oh, that works too. Never mind, that works. That's fine. All right, yeah. Um, so and the reason I said that was because uh, notice how it got all four done instead of you having to use the fill handle. If you select all of them it'll, and, and, and then ask for auto sum, it'll look to see uh, where it, it would be viable to do that. Um, and as you can see, it looks like your stuff is already bold as well. If you could select into uh, E10 or any of those. Is it bold? It looks like it's bold on my, on my end. I can't tell though for certain. It is? Okay. All right, I just couldn't tell. Um, and so you need to do the same for annual total. So however you want to get the total there, you can. Okay. You're welcome, princess. Yes, something else. Um, Is this the right? Uh, yeah, yes. I look, I look, I look. Um, sorry, I just saw Princess ask a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. I noticed this uh, my last class too that um, for some reason the chat question is coming slower for me. Um, so what we do right here is what we turn in for the ninth. Yes, yes. Oh, it looks like you're, it looks like someone answered you. Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sandra and April as well for answering those questions. All right, so um, now that we have that all taken care of, um, and you showed uh, three ways to do so. We can use the sum formula, we can use the auto sum, and she also um, selected and used the quick analysis tool. And under, under totals, she selected the sum. So all of those are viable ways to do so. So that was great. You showed um, multiple ways to do it. All right, so uh, next. So be sure in F, it says in F6 through F9,
that these are given comma style with zero decimal places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then zero decimal. Cool. Excellent. All right, now. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that way it's uh it looks the same as it does across the rest of them. So um yes. Yeah, cool. Oh. Mm, excuse me. All right, cool. So now that we have that and it's already in total sales style, it looks like. So let's uh let's add some percent of totals um in the in column G there where we see percent of total. So we need to construct the formula. Let's start in possibly G5. Um it says construct the formula to calculate the percent of total. Remember, percents are um the parts divided by holes, and this says so straight up to divide the annual total for salaries and benefits. So where's the annual total for salaries and benefits? We're going to select that. The annual total for salaries and benefits. Yes, good. And it says to divide that by the annual total for all quarters. Cool. All right. Now, some of you may already say there's something else we need to do with that, and you would be correct. Um, but we can, yes, go ahead. Ah, oh, look at that. Perfect. So she's adding the dollar signs in front of it. That's because it needs to be an absolute reference because she's about to copy this down. And remember, when you copy something down, it will also um, move the values down unless you, relative to where you are, unless you tell it not to by using the absolute references. So she's preemptively pre preventing herself from making a mistake. Excellent. Cool. All right, you got that taken care of. Let's give these guys a percent style. Yep. Working with percents. And um, let's uh, center them as well. All right, awesome. All right, well, that's the, that's the first part. So that's a step up to step three. Okay, any questions there? Okay, so we've done a lot of um, the last couple or over the last few weeks, six weeks, we've done a lot of uh, manipulating stuff that involves uh, prices or money in some kind of way. Um, and we saw how in the first row and the last row, we have an accounting format and in the middle is comma uh, style. Um, we've seen that the bottom row usually is in total cell style uh, with those bar one bar above and two below uh, in bold. Um, we've seen how to do percentages, and they tend to be a part over a whole. Um, we change it to percent style. Sometimes we add extra decimals. Uh, sometimes we don't. Um, and we've seen how to do so with it using an absolute reference. That's that's the common stuff that's come up a lot. And so I'm mentioning that now just so because it, it, we won't continue doing that all the time forever. But it's stuff to recognize. So uh, for your own professional life. Okay. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a 3D pie chart. So in step four, it says use a 3D pie chart to, and so listen very carefully here, to chart before, before you go to the insert tab. So we're using a 3D pie chart to chart the annual total for each item. We're charting the annual total for each item. Okay. So we need to decide what do we need to select? So what should we select? Good. So we're selecting the annual total and it said for each item. So what else should we select? If it says for each item, where are the items? Yes. So if you hold down control, then you can, yeah, uh, we only want, oops, so do that again. Cause we only want, we don't need the total part. We only need the, yeah, we only need the items. We don't need, we don't need the total by quarters because that's not an item. So you only need A5 to A9. Yeah, and then now get the, yep. Now you can get the annual totals. Okay, good. So uh, most of the time when people do this assignment, they will first, they'll, they'll get the percent of totals. Sometimes they'll get all, they'll get everything. We don't need everything. It says that we need the annual total for each item. 
So that's what we're charting. So uh, if you go to the insert tab, now we can insert our 3D pie chart. Because we selected what it will be based off of. Okay. So I click that sucker. Now we got our 3D pie chart. Excellent. So um, now the next thing it asks us to do is to move it to a new sheet and name that new sheet annual expenses chart. Do you all remember how to move it to a new sheet? So with the chart selected, if you go to the um, chart design tab, this is a contextual tab that's been added on. Yep. Yes, in the location group, you'll see move chart. And so we have a new sheet and they told us to name it the annual expenses chart. Cool. So remember uh, or notice again that we have a difference here, right? With our annual expenses chart, uh, with the when we move a sheet, a chart to its own sheet, it literally becomes that whole sheet. There's no um, cells in the background or anything like that. So um, yeah, so this would print out as its own as its own sheet in its entirety. So it's very important to remember. All right, so now we can um, change the chart title. It says to summary of annual expenses. Okay, so now we're going to format the chart title. Now that we've done that, so select it and then um, Actually, uh, go so with the selected, um, uh, go to the format tab. So you you right click, which you actually it, it actually should have shown up as a little part of the mini toolbar. Okay, it it uh, it is, but I don't know if that's technically trying to do shape. So you see above it, uh, we have style, fill, and outline. Sometimes, oh no, uh, no, 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 not there. But when you right click on it, um, uh, that's what came up. You see at the top uh, that little extra mini toolbar. Yeah, so we're not going to use we're not going to use these though because uh, based off what is shown there, those look like those are referring to the shape, which would be kind of like you can think of it as the object that that text is in that text box that is in, and so um, just be mindful of that because let's say you want to change the fill of the text, you're thinking that oh it says fill it's the same thing, um it's not um because one is talking about the actual text box that is in, the other is talking about the actual text that is in. So um, in the format tab, on, in the word art styles group, we're going to select a word art style. We're going to choose a uh, word art style fill blue accent one uh, with shadow. Yep. So, yep, that was good. And we're going to change the font style, uh, sorry, font size to 28. Excellent. All right. It did ask us to remove the legend from the chart. So let me ask you all, where is the legend on the chart? You may not know what a legend is. Yes. So a chart legend will have uh, some type of symbol so that you can recognize what something represents. Um, but we're going to remove this because we're going to be able to put the titles directly on it. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, how you can remove it. So most of the time, don't, so don't do this, Sandra. But most of the time, people just click delete. Um, but we don't want to do that. Uh, how about this? You you know where you can add a chart element, the plus sign that you have. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. You see how legend is checked. Let's uncheck legend. So we'll remove it this way. So now it's gone. Now, again, you could have done a delete, but we uh, I, I didn't want you all to do that. I wanted you to see how to do it uh, properly, so to speak. Okay, Because if you just click delete, it may not readjust the size of the plot area. As you saw, like we got more plot area 
uh, it moved downward when we deleted the legend. So if you just click press delete, it might not do that. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add some data labels. So it looks like you are already heading towards that way. So let's add our data labels. All right, and we can do, yeah, you can select it. So no, look at the data that we get. Rem recall that what we selected were the annual totals and the items, right? Um, so what appeared when we um, click data labels directly? The annual totals, not the items, which is fine. So we're gonna make some modifications. So if you go to more options on that data labels, the format data labels pane should pop up. Whoa. Does yours always do that, Sandra? Does it always pop up like that instead of uh, like being on the side of the window? I'm just curious. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it if, it, if, it, if it's doing it. I'm just wondering if it is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, that's, that's a little, it's, it's strange, but that's okay. So there it is. Um, so, now that we have this here, we can see what our labels uh, contain. And so they are containing the value. So the value we gave each item, which was that total, um, that total, the annual total. And so we're going to make a change to that. We want to show the category name and we want to show the percentage, and that's it. Category name, notice that those um, item numbers are up there now. And then the percentages are now there as well. So you can get rid of the show leader lines as well so we just want that so um i want you to keep in mind uh, to keep in mind that those percentages that we got there are also the percentages that are they're e equivalent to the percentages that we saw uh, on the other page right when we calculated percentages it's not getting it from those it's doing a calculation on its own based off of the annual total values okay so you can calculate the percentage on your own you can also have excel do it for you for a greedy pie chart um, in this way, okay? So how about we scroll down a little bit and let's change the label position as well. It says display positioned in the center. Okay. All right, excellent. So um, now it says to format the data labels by applying a font style of bold, italic, and font size of 12. So, <clears throat> So we want to format these data labels so that we can change their fonts. Okay. So you, uh, you won't I forgot it. No, that's okay. I was gonna say you won't see an option in there, but uh, with our data labels selected, how else? How would you normally change font? Yeah, it's one option right there. Right clicking and going to font there. You could also have done it on the home tab. Uh, on the home tab, in the font group. So let's change it to bold and italic and change the size to 12. Excellent. Yeah, that was it. Good stuff. All right, pretty much we're almost halfway there now. So are there any questions so far? with the creation of this chart and the manipulations we've done at this moment? No? Okay. Notice how she's saving in between? Oh, a smart idea. Okay. All right, so um, next what we're gonna do though is we're gonna format the data series. So could you select the data series for me? Excellent. So remember the data series, you just one click we'll just do up. Thank you. Up. So right now you don't have the data series, you have a data point, you had it, and then you double click again, or you double click, excuse me. So we wanna click uh, click outside uh, in the white area somewhere. Now select the data series. Sorry, that's it. Oh, so uh, go outside again, click once. There we go. So if you double click, you'll end up on a data point, which will only be one of them. Notice how um, we have the little blue dots going around the circle and then one in the middle. That lets us know the whole data series is selected. Also, because the format pane says format data series. Um, if you ever get have trouble 
differentiate differentiating those two. What I tend to do is go to the format tab at the top, go to the format tab. And in the first group, the current selection group, notice it says series one. That means series one is selected. Oh uh, no, in the current selection group, you saw it in the current group. So in the top in the ribbon. And in the in the ribbon. Okay, go to current selection group, all the way to the left, and the top and the left. Yeah, right there. Yep. That's so you can go and select series one. Mm -hmm. So this is how. If you see this up here, that lets you also know that a series is selected. So you can do it either way, uh, as we've seen. Um, you can do it from the format tab in the current selection group. You can select series one and you can see that the series is selected or you can click on it. A lot of people have trouble clicking. They will accidentally have data point, think they're doing everything correct and not know what's wrong. When the issue is that they need the series selected, not just the point. So uh, we see both ways of fixing that now. So, OK, great. Let's let's move on here. So we want to change the um, we want to change the effect. We want to use a three D format effect. So remember, so remember for effects, um, our our fill line and border, like changing the colors and uh, like yeah, changing the colors of things and how fill are. That's in the paint bucket. The uh, actual data that's going in it and how it's manipulated is the column chart looking thing up there, but our effects are in a different area. Our effects are in the Pentagon. So the second option, the Pentagon. So, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are our effects. And actually hover over the Pentagon for me, will you? So we can see the screen tip. Hover over the Pentagon. See, it says effects. Okay, cool. I just want you to see you all to see that it says effect. So yeah, you can go on the select 3D uh, format. Yeah. All right, sweet. So it asks us to change the top bevel and bottom bevel to circle. So let's go ahead and select. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Click on that. It says select circle. Um, I think we talked about last time that it's the same as round um, in our sense because uh, you all didn't have circles, I think. Uh, so let's go to, uh, yeah, no, you're good. Brown is fine. Uh, and the bottom bevel, let's do the uh, same thing. Okay. All right, so we're going to set the top bevel's width and height to 50 points. So the top bevel's width and height to 50 point. Okay, wait, we're not done yet. All right, that's okay. So, yep, bring it out again. All right, so we're going to change the uh, bottom bevel's width and height to 256 points. Now that we have that, um, notice that um, our 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 pie chart becomes more of a disc, almost like a frisbee. It has some curves along itself too, uh, so it looks a lot finer and cleaner. So we're gonna help uh, help with that look by changing its material as well. So go to material. We're gonna change it to a metal under the standard under standard effects. Yep. So have that little sheen on it. And I love that like glare in the front part of it. Um, all right, cool. So now that we have that taken care of, the only thing that we want to do now is let's go to the series options. So that's our um, column looking chart. Now, you're in the right spot. So uh, under the on that on that uh on the format data series pane, uh, click the thing that looks like the column charts. Okay. 
No, um, you you don't need to uh, change anything in the current selection. So yeah, over here. Yep. So the column chart. Column chart. Not not the paint can. Wait. Column chart. That's effects. One more. Right there. So hover over that. Ho uh, hover over that real quick so you can see what that's called. Hover over the column chart so you can see what it's called. Yep. So it's called series options. So it says to display the series options, which is what we have done now. And so it says to uh, set the angle of the first slice to 125. Uh, here we go. Cool. All right. So now notice that in front of you is salaries and benefits. So that's what it says. So that salaries and benefits slices in the front of the pie. Now we want to select the uh, salaries and benefits slice. So that one data point. Excellent. Oh, just the data point. Yep. Sweet. So now that we have that taken care of, let's do some point explosion. Give it a 10% explosion. All right, excellent. Now we're gonna uh, do some more manipulation, but for right now, just I just want you all to take a look at what we've done so far. So we we at, we uh, make sure our was uh, connected to this chart. Then we manipulated what was being shown on the chart. After that, we then began to change the look of the chart. Notice the uh, order in which that was done. Before you do anything, you can't you don't want to think about how you, the chart's gonna look until you actually have the chart made. It's connected to the right data. So that should be the first thing you always do. After that, you can decide what should it, what should actually be shown on this chart. Not worried about how it looks, what is shown on this. And that's what we, in this case, we changed the data labels and uh, made it show the categories and the percentages that went along with it, because that was what was important. After that, we then made changes to how it looked. That should always be the last thing. So in, in your professional life, when you're actually doing stuff like this, that's the last thing you want to do is Okay, let's change colors and stuff. Because if you're thinking about that, the important stuff won't be on there. Okay, um, a lot of times uh, people will sit like with, with PowerPoint, especially. Um, but this happens in Excel too. They focus so much on the look that they forget to make sure their data is sound and correct, um, and the formulas and functions they're using or what they expect to happen is actually happening. They for, they forget or don't care about that. They care more about, ooh, look at the colors I use. Look at uh, how much I make this explode. Uh, I gave it a nice cool sheen. Like that That stuff is great. It has a place because it helps uh, to tell more about what's going on. It makes it easier for the user to, or not user, the uh, audience to see what it is that you want them to see. But the most important thing is that the information is actually there first. Okay, cool. Off my soapbox. All right, so now we're going to change the fill color of the salaries and benefits slice. So we want just that one slice for salaries and benefits. Yes, good. Uh, so we're gonna change the fill color. So, yep, the paint bucket will take care of that. And we're gonna change this to a solid fill. And the color is going to be green accent six, lighters 40%. Excellent. Next, it says to format the chart area. Excellent. You selected the chart area. How do you know that you're in the chart area and not the plot area? Yep. Yeah. So the whole chart is selected. That's great. That's a great thing to point out. I don't think I've actually even said that. The whole chart is selected, not just the plot. The word format chart area is on the pl uh, on the format pane. The word chart area is on the current in, is in the current selection group. You got three ways to identify. You can hover over it too. That would be four ways, so you can see it in the screen tip. You got four ways to know that you're in the right area. Use them. Don't just assume that yeah I did it right, because that's usually the downfall of everyone. This is the number one thing that people mess up with when it comes to these assignments. Um, it's in, with the charts. Uh, especially is that they have the wrong thing selected when they do something and they're 100% sure they did it right and you may have clicked 
on the chart, but you may be in the wrong area of the chart. So you want to make sure you have the right thing. So anyway, uh, great job, Sandra. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to apply a gradient fill um, to this. And we're going to use the preset gradient, light gradient accent four. Does our background uh, starts lighter and goes to a darker color? So now we're going to add a border to this too. Excellent. She realized the border was down there below it, so that's a good memory. Uh, fill has fill and border in, in line too, if there's a line involved. All right, so uh, border, we're going to change the border to be a solid line using the color gold accent four. Gold accent four. Okay. And we're gonna change the width of it to five points. All right. Uh, I think here when you change your width is gone up. Oh, you got the yeah okay, yeah okay cool. Here we go. So excellent. So take look at what we have here. We have a full border around it. It kind of matches in color with the um, the fill color in the background. Gold goes with gold. Looks great. All right. So next, uh, it asks for us to uh, in the go to the page setup dialog box for the chart sheet. Page setup dialog box. Where is the page setup dialog box? I was just going to see if you, if you might remember where that term comes from. So it's in the page layout tab. We're about to add a custom footer. So maybe that will tell you where we're going to go. We're adding a footer. What do we usually do to add a footer in the page setup dialog box? That's one way to get there. Excellent. So we're gonna add a footer. So custom footer. And you know which one we're gonna do in the left section. We're inserting our file name. Great. Good. All right. And guys, just be careful with that in the future. I feel like there's only like two assignments that do things differently. They all they all have insert the file name in the left side, but some of them will ask you to do other things like, ooh, add a page number here. Ooh, add this information. So just be mindful of that when you're going through. I know that it becomes so mundane and routine that you're like, oh, I don't do. Uh, just be careful with that in the future. Uh, you're good for now. So step 11, uh, it asks for us to display the expenses worksheet now. So we're pretty much getting done now with the other one. The expenses worksheet. Cool. All right. So now that we have our expenses worksheet open. Um, we're going to use the quarter names and the totals by quarter to insert a line chart. So this time we're doing using different information. We're using the quarter names and the quarter totals. We're using the quarter names and the quarter totals. Quarter names and quarter totals. Okay. Is all right, so be careful of this just the quarter names and the quarter totals. So, quarter names and the quarter totals. So is an annual total a quarter total? Excellent. And this is why uh, I, I wanted to do this with you all. Uh, not the whole, not to do the whole thing, but just to go through these because those are little nuances that sometimes people would like. Oh, I have all this. I have all of these five sections, so why not use five of them? Um, because it would it would um, skew the look of the graph that you were going for. We want to see what happens each quarter see the changes in quarter. If we put the total on there, it'll make everything else look a lot smaller because the total is all four combined together. Right? All right, so good. 
So we're going to insert a line with markers chart for this data. Line with markers chart, yep. So that's the stack one. And there's line with markers, good. So I select that guy. Excellent. Um, yeah, there's actually even a note in your textbook that says, do not include the annual total. Um, that's how common people do that. Um, it asks for us to move the chart so that the upper left corner is positioned slightly inside the um, upper left corner of cell A12. Okay, cool. So uh, next we want to drag the center right sizing handle. So the center right sizing handle. So no, not that one, the one that's in the middle, the center one, yep. No, the one on the, on the right, on the right. You were, you were in the right spot, so on the right. Yes. Oh, lost it. There we go. So yes. So we're taking that and you're dragging it so that it extends inside of column G. You may want to, you, I mean, you don't have to, but you can move it over some if you want so that it's, um, I mean, like the whole chart, so it's more centered. So that needs to be inside column G. And I was just suggesting moving the chart so that it's centered. You, you don't have to, though. Yeah, you get, you get, no, no. yeah, okay, good, no. all right, <clears throat> cool. So, um, and you all feel free to change that how you want. Um, like I mentioned before, if you change it outside of the parameters of the assignment, uh, just make sure you uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you did uh, and why. So, and then um, change the chart title here. It says to City of Pacifica Bay. Notice the name is City of Pacifica Bay. Annual expense summary. Can you repeat the name? Annual yes. what? Yes, I can. Uh, City of Pacifica Bay. City of Pacifica Bay. Yes. Okay. okay. Pacifica Bay annual. So A N N U A L. A N. Yep. Um, expense summary. Okay. All right, good. So um, that's it for right now. So really only like three more things to do. So, uh, and that's messing with the bounds. So before we do that, are there any questions about this chart? About the other chart? All right, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you, Sandra. I'm getting some feedback. Sorry about that. All right. So um, now we're gonna actually mess with the um, bound, similar to what we did on Tuesday. Actually, that was Tuesday. We did that. Um, so first, we're gonna mess with the vertical axis. So if you could select the vertical value axis, notice that we get the format axis pane to the right. Um, let's look at the uh, on the right. You, you you have it. It's up on the right side. Uh, the format pane. Nope. So we need the vertical selected. Yes, but we're gonna go to the format axis pane over here, to the to the right. It's uh you have you are can you see that on your screen where it says format axis on the very right side? All of it, yeah. Yeah. So that's the pane. So this over here is called format pane. Um it looks like yours is popping up on the right side now, like how it should. Um before yours was put popping up kind of in its own little spot. Um, but this is how it should have appeared. Um and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna manipulate the axis um values so to do this 
let's uh, remember when anytime it has something to do with values, you can click on the little column chart. Yep. So click on that. So we're going to mess with the axis options. <laughs> so um, the minimum value, so the minimum, so the one above that, minimum. Yep. So we're going to change that guy to be 2,100,000. So uh, you, can, you can get rid of that whole thing. No E6. We're going to type it straight in. So it's going to be uh, 2, 1, and then 5 zeros. 2, 1, and then 5 zeros. Sweet. Okay. Now we're going to change the major unit. Yep. We're going to change this to 50,000. Cool. Excellent. All right, now we're going to, um, yeah, so now we're gonna, we're done with the axis for the vertical axis. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to make a change to the chart area. So how do you make sure the chart area is selected? Okay, we're going to change its fill. Good. We're um, changing it to a gradient fill um, by changing the Preset gradient to light gradient accent three. Light gradient accent three. Excellent. Okay. All right. So notice that how we have that the grid lines become harder to see. The text is a little uh, tougher to see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to format the plot area. So select the plot area so that we can format it. Okay, we're going to change its fill to a solid fill, and we're changing the color of it to a white background one. So white background one. Yep. Excellent. All right. So um, is it? All right, cool. That's it with the chart. So a couple of things I do want to point out with that this chart here is that um, notice how the chart area is a different color than the plot area. The plot area goes on top of the chart. Therefore, if we change the plot area, you will see it. Um, if you did not change the plot area, what you'll see in behind it, or what you'll see as the color, quote unquote, in it will be what's in the chart area, okay? So this is why it's important to understand there's a difference between those two things. Right? The plot area is on top of the entire chart area. Ooh. All right, cool. So any questions about the chart manipulation? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did uh, yesterday. We're going to give a forecast. Uh, so to give this forecast, we're going to go down um, to go to cell F10. And we're going to do is we are going to copy that. And then go to cell B35. And we are going to go to paste special. So go to paste and drop down. And we're going to choose values and formatting. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And the reason for that was because remember, it was a total. Um, that's how it was found before, right? We don't want the formula for that total because it would be completely different. Actually, we would end up getting zero um, because it would move relative to the new position. So to help make sure that to make sure that does not happen, we fix that um, by pasting the values. In number in, with number formatting. Okay. All right. So in cell C5, or sorry, C35, sorry, we're going to do like we did similar to uh, two days ago. So similar to Tuesday, we're going to construct the formula to calculate the projected expenses after the forecast increased by 3.5, which is in cell 
B31. So we're going to calculate, I'll use a formula to calculate the increase. So how do we begin every formula? Equals, good. Good, she put the equals in there. All right, so we want we want to increase. Uh, so you could look at what we did on Tuesday. Uh, we, it's the same type, same style formula. So we take B35, and then we want to yep multiply by what? Let's see if you remember. So you want to know if you want a percent increase. Yep, okay, B B what? B31, good, All right? And there's one more piece that you need because if you get that, you only get the, the forecast increase. We need how much we had originally. So what percentage will represent all that you have? So plus what percent? What percent is all that you have? Yes. Good memory. All right. So you can close that parentheses and we should be straight. Good to go. All right. So there's our little increase. All right. So we want we want to finish that off for the rest of them. And when you do so, you may notice something goes back half. Okay. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. Oh, well, why are all the numbers the same? What happened? Cell hmm. reference. It's the cell reference. So let's go to it. Okay. Yeah, you're picking it up. So what? So one of these cells needs to stay the same all the time. Which one? That yeah. one. Uh, which one? That one. All right, so the B35 is the previous year's um, expenses. So you will always use the pre you always use the previous year's expenses as you move forward. So we don't want to change that. So, but yes, yes. So B31 needs to stay the same because it is always going to be 3.5 percent at least uh, part. Oh, okay, so, so you, you so, were, you were me gonna, right? Yeah, you're okay. right. Change B31. Okay. What happened for this one? Oh, that's just uh it can't see the value. Um, okay. the, the columns just aren't uh, large enough. Let's see. Do I need to decrease the zero or not? To show um, the value? Let's see. Was it, it had zero decimal to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It did. It, oh, well, we're about to take care of that, actually. Um, so. Now that you did that, we want to take the um, format that's in V35 and paste the format onto everything else, onto everything in C35 onwards. So, yep, you want to get that format. So, how do we copy the format? Yes. So, if you remember, if you, yeah, go ahead. And we're going to put it on all the rest of them. So, remember, if you, Okay, well, good, good. Oh, that, that actually copied over the format too after you did that. So one other thing though that you could do is uh, when you selected B35, if you had double clicked on the format painter, you would have been able to select the others as well uh, after you selected the first one. Or if you, so, uh, as soon as you have format painter active, if you select everything that you want to have that format at one time. I usually just double click on Format Painter. That way, I can click as many things as I want, and I tell it when I'm when I'm done copying the format. Okay. But what you did works too. So good. All right. So um, that was actually everything. So it's pretty short uh, project, honestly. Uh, so all you need to do now is to change the orientation to landscape. 
where do you go to do that? We need to change the orientation, the landscape too. Yep, you need to change do the custom format to uh, a custom footer. Yep. So, yep, got that. That's so that's that's centering it horizontally. How do you change the landscape? How do you change the orientation? Yeah, so it needs to be landscape. Um, we also want it to scale to yeah. Go ahead, custom footer, left section, insert sheet name. Yeah. Or file name, sorry. Um, let's go back to page. Because there's something you need to do. We want to scale to fit so that it, if um, we want to use the scale to fit option so that it fits to a height of one for the page. So if you go to fit to, you're going to click on the actual radio button for fit to first to the left of fit to. So you have to uh, select that option before you can modify it. Yep. Okay. So we want to. Uh, what? No, no, we don't want to. We want. We don't want to change that. We want to leave that blank. Leave that part blank. We want to change how many the height to one page. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Is it one? That yes. number here. One page. Yep. Okay. One page. So by leaving the other one blank, it, it will keep keep it set to be automatic. Uh, and that's what we want to do in this instance. So, okay, good. You click OK. I think you hit everything else already. You got the margin center horizontally. You got the landscape change. You inserted the custom footer to the left. Excellent. Now, I want you, before you move on, I want you to look on the page layout tab. Go to the scale to fit group. Scale to fit group. So you, you, your page layout tab, we're on the page layout tab, go to the scale to fit group. Remember groups are named at the bottom of each one of these sections. So we want scale to fit. Yes. So, uh, well, I, I, I didn't want you, you don't have to open it. I just want to show you something. So you can cancel that. But in this group, look at the commands. Notice how it says automatic for width. No, 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 just look above it. Notice how it says automatic for width and it says one page for height. That's what we changed just now, right? So remember I said leave it blank because it'll keep it automatic for width and then change the second one that would said how many pages tall it would be to one. So it'd be one page high. This is also where you can make that change. You can do that change here in the scale to fit group under the page layout tab. Uh, I tend to do everything in the page setup dialog box. Uh, as you all can see, it's, it's all right there in that same swoop. So Whenever I make uh, adjustments, I try to do it all there, um, but you don't have to. So I just want to show that how how you'll be able to recognize that. Oh, did that work exactly how I wanted to? You can look here to if it's scaled to fit correctly. All right. And so uh, the last thing is to add the tags. Make sure you're the author, and that's it. The tags are annual expense summary. What's the tag? Uh, annual expense summary. Annual expense summary. Okay. Okay. So, category. Oh, so we like to see what? Uh, I, it's hard for me to see your text. Fine. It's, all right. Hold on. CS subject, CS high, and Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a week ahead. <laughs> if, if you've already finished 3A, 3B. So, yeah. uh, as I mentioned to you all before, this it, what usually happens with this class is that we end up as we get ahead. It doesn't always happen, though. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm fine with keep moving forward. If y'all want more examples of stuff, let me know. 
Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but even in a textbook, there are multiple projects that go over these same skills, uh, which I'm fine going through those as well um, so that you can have more examples. Um, the other thing is that if we get finished, um, and this is not an incentive to rush through um, the, the curriculum for the course, but the more time we have at, towards the end, the more that you can delve in, dive into using macros, uh, which is a big portion uh, or a big portion of importance to many people, or maybe some other projects that you may say, hey, I've always wanted to know how to do this thing in Excel. Can you show me an example? Um, I've only had that happen once in a class and we literally only had one day of it. Um, so, and it's just because we had, we had one day left uh, afterwards, but students showed up and they wanted to uh, you know, like learn more skills and that's why they pushed to try to get done as early as they could. Uh, I don't want to push to get done as early as possible. I want to push that you all gain the most knowledge that you can in this course and it's helpful to you and you're successful. So there's a difference with that. So don't ever feel rushed. You're like, oh, we need to be keep being a week ahead. We don't have to keep being a week ahead, but we will continue to move forward from here. And I won't, I won't like, oh, we'll move very all the deadlines up a week. I won't do that to you either. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, and if you ever need uh, need me to slow down or you feel like we are going too fast, just let me know. If you don't want to put it in the chat to me privately, even you send an email. Uh, you can tell my supervisor, and he can tell me uh, whatever whatever you most what you're most comfortable with. I I I expect that you all will probably just because uh, you all are uh, pretty open, so which I like a lot. Uh, so yeah, just let me know. Um, and yeah, I I hope you all are well. I can tell at least from some of the um, evaluations I've been seeing and some of your comments that you all have been enjoying yourselves uh, with this course. Um, I'm glad I'm, I'm enjoying myself and that's that's what I like about uh, teaching is what I get to enjoy as much as my students. So uh, thank you all for sharing this experience with me for these be fast so far. Uh, we are a week ahead now. Woo! It's great. Um, so uh, on Tuesday, what I what I would like to happen is that um, you all have done your 3A, 3B, caught up with any other thing that you need to, any thing you need to go back and make corrections for and turn in. Uh, and then you come in, if you have any questions with it, uh, or anything in the past, we talk about it, share your screen maybe, and we can even go through the corrections if you have some assignments and maybe even look at, okay, you said this in this rubric, how do I change? Um, so we can do that together. Uh, that that's available um, as well. So uh, and then after that, if we have more, to begin looking at or a. So that's 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 what I am expecting. Uh, we may not get a chance to look at four a because you all may have a lot of questions with three in the uh, with three G and uh, projects from the past, or maybe you want to know more about some things that we've uh, seen so far. So um, it's completely up to you. Uh, but then after that, we'll move on to uh, 4A, and look at the description lecture version of that. So, no corrections with late ones, right? Um, there are no corrections with late ones. Of course, I'm not evil. Like, if you've had, you know, extraordinary circumstances that you've already let me know before the deadlines even occurred, um, then, of course, I will allow that um, correction. Um, but yeah, it's uh, generally speaking, it's a it's a firm no for if you were late turning in an assignment. There's no time, no correction allowed for you. Uh, yeah, but so if you feel like you maybe one of those similar circumstances, don't worry about it. Go ahead and turn it in. <laughs> so. Okay, are there are there any questions? From anyone? Okay. In that case, yes, yes, please work on corrections if you have them. 
Uh, again, some of you all, I think I said to you, 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 even you may have been late, but you turned in like just like mistakenly the wrong assignment completely. Like you turned in like the scripture lecture maybe on accident. Uh, so I, I, I think I told some of you all like probably like go ahead and turn the right thing in, or if you submitted the uh, the starter file on accident, uh, and I, I yeah. I've mean, I've known you worked because I I worked on something with you, so I know that you did did it. I've, I've asked you to turn it in. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, I don't expect anyone to uh, not be successful in this course. Just to be honest, uh, you guys have very very good work work ethic. Very very good work ethic. And you're enjoying yourselves. Yeah. Well, all right. Um. If there are no questions, you all have a group. All right, yeah. You all have a great weekend, and I'll see you later. Yeah, no, you're you're yeah, you're fine, Princess. I uh, I understand that. Oh yeah, points don't aren't taken off because they're late at all. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's just things that you you may have missed. That was it. So yeah, yeah. I thought you emailed me about that, and I emailed you back. If I didn't email you back, I'm sorry. I, I thought I did. I remember seeing that. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you're you're fine. All right. Well. Have a good weekend. Oh. <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah, get anything that's missed.